Hello, colleagues. Today we're having our financial forum, and this is a good reason to meet the financiers, our colleagues from the government. It's a great opportunity to discuss the issues of interest. These issues are relevant for financial community and not only. And we're having a lot of sessions that touch upon the issues of taxes, interbudgetary relations, debt, treasury, and all of that is very relevant for our participants. And the participants are the financiers of the Russian Federation constituent entities, treasurers, financiers that work in various institutions. And this is a real holiday for us and a great opportunity to discuss professional issues. And if there are any questions, I'm ready to answer that. Could you please tell us about the main parameters of the budget for the next three-year period? What is the volume of income and cost? Now we are on the final stage of budget preparation. In the second half of this month, we will have the meeting of the government that will determine the parameters of the budget, budgetary policy, fiscal policy, and by the end of the month, we will introduce this document to the Parliament. The Budgetary Commission had already taken place and the main parameters had been determined. And we will follow the budgetary rule for the next three-year period. The general parameters of the budget for the next two or three years will have a small surplus. 2024, it will be a bit less than zero, a small deficit. And this is related to the proceeds we get from the export of oil. And the forecasted price for oil is the main factor for the budgetary balance. Still, the overall volume of costs will grow annually. In 2023 and 2024, this will be a bit more than 1 billion rubles. This is the growth of costs. And the main goals of the budget is the implementation of national goals determined by the president, implementation of strategic initiatives adopted by the Russian Federation government this year, supporting our citizens, fulfillment of the presidential messages, the message of this year, presidential speeches of this year and last year that determine the tasks, such as supporting families with children, demographic issues, and all these solutions have the necessary financing. Besides, it's very important for the government to develop new sectors of the economy, such as radio, electronics, hydrogen, new infrastructure, and all the goals of strategic initiatives of the government. Half trillion rubles have been allocated for these initiatives for three years. And the necessary resources have also been allocated, so the budget is well balanced. It has been determined. We know its parameters. And right now, together with our institutions and agencies, we are improving specific aspects. And next week, once again, we will discuss it in the government and introduce it as a final document to the Russian Federation government. Speaking about the budget stability, on the backdrop of the stability, we can see stagnation of people's income. So do you think that measures fighting poverty are sufficient and will the launch of Treasury help us fight inequality? 
Speaking about the income, we can see that this year, thanks to the additional income received by the Treasury, there are specific solutions and support measures that are being implemented for the citizens that need the government's help. These are pensioners, families with children that started to attend school for the first time, and this policy will continue. A number of solutions for helping people with low income. The decisions on which were taken last year and this year allow us to speak about the measures implemented for fighting poverty. Social treasury is an element of our financial policy. Social treasury will help people receive support from the government. I'm speaking about the poorest citizens. They will not need to prepare specific documents. It will be enough to prepare an application online through social treasury. And after verification, these people will get the necessary financial assistance. Together with the Central Bank of Russia, we are taking measures to prevent speeding up the inflation rates because it has grown recently. And we are planning to decrease this trend. Budgetary measures and fiscal measures will be implemented in this area. And the inf this inflation tax that our citizens have to pay will decrease. It means that the issue of stagnation of people's income will be resolved. I'm speaking about inflation decrease and growth of targeted social aid. Elena Kudryavtseva from TAS agency and Don Germanovich, can we say that the Russian economy has already overcome all the consequences of corona crisis and do you think that next year the growth will be much lower due to the effect of the high base of this year? We believe that all in all the economy has recovered, we have reached pre-pandemic levels it is uh, evident not only by looking at the tape or pace of uh, the development, economic development, we also see that the investments are growing. If you look at the oil and gas sector, you will see it's up to 5% in real terms. So economic activity is obvious. Talking about the tax collection, the VAT, tax as well as uh, other types of taxes uh, actually are going ahead of the economic forecasts that we have had. That means that we can have even more optimistic uh, forecasts uh, by the end of the year. So all in all, I can confirm your statement by saying that we have uh, overcome the consequences of the pandemic. Now, it's important to maintain the pace of uh, development, and that can be done with uh, certain economic uh, decisions um, that also can spur further economic growth. So we are implementing strategic initiatives of the government, the national projects aimed at supporting our economy, and we are providing financial incentives. Uh, you know, we have the foundation of the national well-being that uh, will help us implement uh, projects uh, in infrastructure and new sectors of economy. We are engaging various uh, sectors. We help regions by providing loads and other types of support. And uh, every year, we are increasing our allocations uh, primarily in the social sector. So the incentives that 
are provided in the budget should support the pace of growth that uh, we are targeting. And this year, we're expecting 2.4% of growth. Next year, it will be around 3%. So based on that, we have developed our forecast. And this uh, estimate is the basis for developing the budget for the upcoming three years. Anton Kamermanovich, you said that uh, the investments uh, in the infrastructure projects will amount up to 3 billion rubles, but at the same time, the Ministry of Eco Economy uh, said that this uh, process should be financed without any limits. Would you support this initiative? And in the, if so, that would be the scope of investments. And secondly, can we talk about taxes? President Putin already has announced that as of next year, we will increase uh, uh, the uh, tax for added value, and uh, we would like to understand how much the budget can receive uh, by raising ta taxes. And uh, uh, apart from metallurgy, are there any sectors uh, where it, uh, we can expect uh, high taxes? Uh, well, we have synchronized uh, the clock with the central bank, bank and we are going to allocate uh, 1.6 trillion rubles for uh, new projects over the next four years, starting from this year. And the projects are built or developed in a way so that the uh, bulk of resources uh, will be used in the next three years. Nevertheless, the parameters of investment are coordinated with the central bank, and uh, we stick to the plan. As for the services, we are talking about the inv uh, invest in investments by a fund uh, for procuring uh, the foreign equipment. This money will not be work in the territory of Russia, so uh, they will not uh, impact the monetary demand. Uh, so right now, we are discussing the situation to make sure that uh, the implementation of the project service and uh, uh, using the funds will become possible in a way so that it will not be impactful on the general parameters of the monetary policy. Now let's uh, talk about the natural uh, resources and the markets. Indeed, we we are looking at different uh, possibilities to execute the uh, upon the directives we were given, and I'd like to give you some statistics. If you look at the natural rent uh, in the oil and gas sector, it's up to 80 percent. Uh, if we talk about metallurgy, and uh, we are talking about black and uh, ferrous, ferrous, non-ferrous uh, uh, metallurgy, so uh, up to 1.6 percent. Of course, we are not going uh, to um, equalize the uh, extraction levels, but the additional revenue, initial earnings of, of this sector from the price changes in the global market actually could be used uh, for achieving the goals and implementing strategic initi initiatives. And uh, the, when it comes to import replacement, something the president was talking as well about uh, is uh, important for us and it requires additional investments on our part. So if we uh, look at uh, what additional uh, earnings are spent uh, by uh, uh, by in metallurgy sector, it is uh, spent on dividends. Yes, uh, dividends are good, but uh, what do you do with them? Do you invest them in the new production, in the new manufacturing facilities? No. We just have discussed the plenary recession. Uh, the following fact, the goal of uh, the Russian Federation, but not only of other countries, is to make sure that the government is also involved uh, in the process of uh, developing certain economic sectors, actually the pri ones that are of priority, the ones that create new jobs. And uh, such processes, uh, such as uh, taking um, extra rent uh, earnings, are justified and fair.
I said 1.6 trillion. I cannot hear the question asked without the microphone. As for uh, services, uh, we are discussing that uh, issue with the central bank. And all in all, they agree with this approach. If the money does not work in uh, inside our economic uh, economics domestically, then uh, the increase is possible. So it certainly will depend on procurements of uh, foreign equipment uh, and uh, we indeed can increase the limit. As for additional earnings in the term of uh, increasing the extraction rent. I cannot give you any parameters because so far we have not finalized our discussion. Uh, so later on we will uh, discuss the budget uh, draft logic uh, with the government and then we will be able to determine the volumes uh, we will include in the budget for the upcoming year. Hello, this is Rachmanova, Ms. Rachmanova from Interfax, Anton Germanovich. Uh, as for this year and the dynamics of budget execution, what a result do you expect? Uh, can you, do you expect any surplus? If so, what uh, will be the scope of it? And you said that a modest uh, surplus uh, can be expected next year. So what is the level of surplus you're expecting next year, if any? And another question, earlier you said that uh, that in autumn uh, you may issue rural bonds in the market. Uh, do you still have these plans? And uh, are there any possibilities to do so currently? As for the current year, we are expecting an additional uh, earning equal to 1.7 trillion rubles. I have said that earlier. And uh, as for the general budget balance, I believe that we will strike uh, zero. Uh, because as for all additional earnings, we are going to allocate them to support our population and such decisions have already been made. We had talked uh, about uh, subsidies for families with children. Uh, we also provided some subsidies to military people uh, and uh, retired people. And there are other measures to stimulate the economy. As for the upcoming year, 2022 may have a surplus around 1%. And similar is the forecast for 2023. It can be 0.3%. As for euro bonds, uh, currently we are taking loans in the domestic market. Of course, uh, there is no need to launch in the foreign markets, although certainly we have a right to do so. We always look at the at, at the, the loan conditions domestically and internationally. So based on the current situation, uh, we will see whether it will make sense uh, and we will to do so or not. So uh, once again, I will reiterate by saying that the domestic market seems uh, quite satisfactory for us. Thank you very much. Hello, this is a journalist from RBK. Are there any plans to provide financial aid to Belarus? And uh, should we expect any tax related surprises this year, uh, uh, similar to what happened last year when the excise tax was increased uh, for tobacco and so on? As for the Belarus, we see that uh, our neighbor is uh, experiencing certain challenges at the moment. So we are interacting with our colleagues uh, and we're discussing whole array of questions and uh, our goal is to make sure that we can stimulate the process of integration. So we are signing strategic 
uh, we are developing strategic plans to integrate our economies. So today, it's the most important uh, topic in our agenda. However, I don't exclude the possibility that we eventually may provide certain financial assistance if uh, needed. As for tax-related surprises, uh, uh, then uh, I can tell you that uh, we should not expect uh, many, if any. So one more specified question. As for the loan program for the current year, are you going to introduce any changes uh, uh, or it will remain in the same shape or form. Uh, well, we are very cautious when it comes to our actions in the market. And uh, if uh, somebody would like to include high uh, risk premium, in that case, we cut down loans or we don't hold the tender at all. So indeed, our estimate for the current year in terms of um, launching a market uh, was uh, 2.8 trillion rubles uh, and a similar uh, forecast is for the next year and we always uh, pursue a goal uh, of uh, keeping the interest rates safe in the markets uh, as we do a large skate uh, uh, loan. And uh, we are also very careful in terms of identifying the portfolio structure. We want our portfolio of uh, uh, assets to be very stable. That actually does not depend uh, on the market situation and that will decrease payments. and. Uh, one more. Hello, Anton Germanovich, the Ministry of uh, Forest Development b developed the norms for preferential uh, uh, format uh, for the Kuril Islands, and we would like to know when will this uh, mode be introduced. Uh, together with the Ministry of Economic Development, uh, we have uh, developed this uh, format. We have approved upon it. And uh, I believe that the discussion at the Ministry of Finance will not take much time. Thank you.